Hey guys, Mike Rizzo back with you. Thanks for joining me. Um, I want to share a couple things with you today about the struggle that we all have between doubt and faith. Can doubt and faith coexist within us at the same time? And, you know, I really have been pondering uh, some of the things I've been going through lately because of the transition I'm in in life. Uh, I'll share more about that with you a little bit later in this video. But um, mental frailty, just sometimes feeling, you know, kind of vulnerable and kind of really like liable in some ways. And, you know, we've done lots of counseling over the years, 40 plus years counseling couples, married couples, premarital couples. And just the things that couples go through in their marriages and in their individual lives uh, that really can make you feel like you're uh, on emotionally uh, thin ice. And it's a, it's a struggle. It's real. We all face it. So doubt and faith. You know, uh, having a problem with trusting God and even sometimes feeling jaded compared with times that I just have strong trust and strong belief and strong confidence. You know, these two are kind of like um, at odds with each other, right? We all kind of face this battle, uh, these conflicting forces on the battlefield of our minds. And can faith and doubt coexist? Is that a normal wrestle to have? Or do they take turns being in charge? Um, so every disciple with any spiritual muscle knows that the process is not always going to be smooth, okay? Um, growing in faith does require that we go through contested territory and uh, allowing the Lord to even dismantle strongholds and previous belief systems in our lives. One scripture I really like is 2 Corinthians 4.18. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. The things we see now will soon be gone. The things we cannot see will last forever. Wow. Not an easy task. Fix your eyes on things you cannot see. That's the walk of faith. You know, the early disciples, they were um, battling some of the things that uh, we all battle with. And that is that Jesus spoke some very clear promises to them uh, about what to believe for and hope for. So after he was gone from them, uh, they... They encountered him in different ways, all the post-resurrection appearances, one of which was on the Emmaus Road. And the scripture in Luke 24, 21, says that they, they say, we had hoped he was the Messiah who had come to rescue Israel. Now they were doubting, now they were wondering. And the other scripture, which I'm sure you probably have heard before, Proverbs 13, 12, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Hope deferred, that, that's a struggle sometimes, isn't it? So there are times when things aren't making sense and, um, you know, deferment to fulfillment, right? Hope, for, hope deferred, uh, desire fulfilled. So deferment to fulfillment is a cycle that requires us to stay mobile, moving in our faith to shake off the atrophy of doubt. That's just something that we are called to. We just have to do it. So double-minded or single-minded. Okay, famous scripture here, James chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. It says, For that person ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, the person that is doubting. Don't expect to receive anything because you're being double-minded and you will be unstable in all your ways. So whenever um, somebody you know encourages me with the scripture or I've encouraged somebody else with the scripture, somebody that's being double-minded and they're unstable, they're you know bouncing back and forth in a ping-pong match in their mind, uh, or someone's used it on me, Sometimes it can feel kind of like a hammer of condemnation. Stop being double-minded. You know, focus, focus. Good advice, but sometimes not always easy to do. And, you know, when you look at the word doubt, what it means, one definition is 
to be at variance with oneself. Ugh. U-G-H. Ugh. I know that feeling so hard sometimes. Now I wake up feeling one way one day and another way another day and it's like, oh, I just feel at variance within myself. Who am I? What do I believe? Normal. But again, it's not a place that we want to camp out in or, or make a permanent dwelling, right? And um, what, I, what I like about um, the, the, the process here is that we don't, we don't do it alone. We, we need to find our tribe. We need to find trusted friends that we can walk this through with. And, um, you know, I've never been to an AA meeting, but I know people that have. And it's like what you get to say when you're a guest or a new member to a group is, Hello, my name is... Mike, and I'm an alcoholic. You get to confess what your need is, okay? <clears throat> so, no one is rejected, no one is an outcast. Uh, you're accepted. And um, I do want to clarify that yes, it's really important to speak the promises of God over your life, absolutely. But not to the point of denial either. We need to be honest and vulnerable and authentic with what we're going through. Case in point, just this past week, uh, I was meeting with my best friend, which I do every other Friday, sometimes more. Um, and we are totally open, accountable with each other. And at a, at a recent uh, meeting, the two of us, I just was sharing with him some of the struggles I was going through as a 70-year-old man. And I was battling kind of this fear of aging thing. And sort of this nostalgic, sentimental-ish type of darkness. You know, this isn't gonna always going to be this way, and this won't always be this way. I'm getting older, blah, blah, blah. As I say it now, it's like seems so ridiculous. But it was very real and very troubling to me. And so I just confessed it to him. And later on, as we were praying for each other, he was so affirming, and he prayed, he said, um, you know, Lord, I thank you for Mike's confession that he made today about, you know, what, what, I, what I was feeling. And he just validated me and, and encouraged me in his prayer. And I thought, wow, that's just what happened. I was able to confess to my, my trusted friend and it lifted it from me. And I'm not battling with it today, right now. Not that it won't circle back at some point in time, but I'm good today. So find your tribe, find a trusted circle that you can confess and be open with. And, you know, I, I was thinking about Jesus' brothers, the siblings, and being in the family that Jesus grew up in, right? First 30 years. Um, wow, they must have been drawn into some kind of spiritual experience, I would think. They had a great mom, too, right? Um, but there's two scriptures I want to share with you that are kind of like bookends in our journey. Okay, the first one is John chapter 7, verse 5. For not even his brothers believed in him. And the other is Acts 1 14. All these were continually devoting themselves with one mind to prayer, along with the women, and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Wow. So the heart of his siblings transitioned over time. And I think those two scriptures, those two bookends, again, the continuum, the process that we're in, we're all called to be, you know, uh, uh, victorious in this journey, but it is a process. And um, I want to read one more scripture to you, and then, I, then I'll let you go for today. It's Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 and 17. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Gosh, you know, 2,000 years later, we're reading these stories and we're like, how can you doubt when you saw the post-resurrected Jesus and all the things he did in his resurrected body and you're seeing him ascend into heaven? How can you possibly doubt? But, but here's the fact of the matter. Some worshipped, some doubted, but all were commissioned. 
So just because you're struggling with doubt and faith and they seem to be co-mingling at times, do not believe the lie that you don't belong on the team. You are still a part. Let me say one more thing before I let you go. I love the fact that he includes us in the process of making disciples while we ourselves are still in the making. Love you guys. Be blessed. In Jesus' name, see you next time.